What if I told you there was a modern supercar with retro looks to die for that handled like a modern Lotus, but still had all the old school elements that we love, like unassisted steering, a manual gearbox, a super low curb weight. And then in the back, it's got a rip snorting modern engine. It's got all the modern materials, lightweight materials. It's got all the electronic conveniences that make a sports car like this actually usable day to day. You'd bite my hand off, wouldn't you? But what I just described is this. Exciting, isn't it? It's called the Radford Type 62.2 and it marks the return of iconic British coach builders, Radford. Time for a quick history lesson. Harold Radford founded his company back in 1948, building beautiful coach-built conversions like the Bentley Countryman, an uber-spec Bentley estate, a shooting brake version of the Aston Martin DB5, and most famously, ridiculously poshed up minis that were bought by the likes of the Beatles, Twiggy, even Enzo Ferrari. And now it's back from the dead, courtesy of a team that includes Anne Anstead and Jensen Button. We're gonna be speaking to both of those in just a minute. But first, let's take this moment to drink in this gorgeous tribute to the original Lotus 62. And the first thing I should talk about is that it is Lotus technology underneath. So you've got a bonded and riveted aluminum chassis out back. You've got a 3.5 litre supercharged V6 with a choice of manual or DCT gearboxes. In its skinniest form, this car is gonna weigh under a thousand kilograms, which is very exciting indeed. Right, let's take a chance to look at all the amazing little details on this car because it really is a blend of retro design with modern technology. The badge first. Now this, this is real gold on the Lotus symbol there, on enamel, made in the jewellery quarter in Birmingham, just like the gold lettering that's on the back of the car. The headlights, this is a great example because they've got this soft, curved, retro shape, but in there, it's LED technology, so it's modern performance. The brakes, so these are Brembo's finest, CCMR brakes with monoblock calipers. This is hypercar braking performance. It's the most ridiculous brakes on the market. You've also got a carbon rim here. You've got Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. The wing mirrors, well, they're not actually wing mirrors, they're wing cameras. Modern wing mirrors obviously have to be so big these days that it would be ungainly, it would ruin the proportions of the car, but if you've got a camera in here feeding a screen in there, then they can be these elegant little pods. Moving down the side of the car, the doors. Yes, the way these cut into the roof has some significance. Obviously it's born out of necessity because you need to be able to get in and out of this car with some sort of dignity. But actually this is also a little nod to Radford's past because they made the original fiberglass body for the GT40 prototype, which had doors just like this. Very nice indeed. Coming around the back, a lot more gorgeousness, basically. Starting here with the engine cover. Um, again, another little retro nod to the Lotus 62, but I just want to point out the detail here, the way that mesh is integrated, the radius of these creases and the way they fade out to nothing. It's beautifully thought through, this car. I also like this full width tail light and the way it curls around at either end. You've got these kind of multi-layer gold exhaust tips, which are just gorgeous. And then the centerpiece, these double ducktail spoilers. Now you don't get these on the classic model. You get it on the gold leaf and the JPS, but essentially the whole point with this project is you can have whatever you want. And may I suggest that you go for these because back in the day, these would have just been bolt on parts to give you a bit more downforce at your track day, but here they are sculpted and integrated into the carbon fiber and they're just stunning. Yes, please. Which gearbox and how much power and downforce you have depends on which one of the three specs you go for. There's a choice of classic, which gets a 430 horsepower V6 manual gearbox and no spoiler. Gold leaf, which is the one here and gets a 500 horsepower V6 DCT gearbox, twin ducktail spoilers, center lock wheels, and motorsport traction control, and the top spec JPS John Player Special with a 600 horsepower V6, DCT gearbox, proper aero kit, carbon wheels, and carbon ceramic brakes. Only 62 will be built. Buyers can jump in with Jensen on a track day to hone their skills, and each will be unique to its owner. Radford says with a blank check, there's nothing it can't alter or make happen. Here's Ant Anstead to explain a bit more. So we first of all started with our engineering 
set, you know, what is the engineering um, we have to overcome? So we chose the Exige platform, yeah. uh, which means that the engine is behind the driver. Mm -hmm. So that limited us. We couldn't do an Elite or an Elan because they're front engined cars, but yeah. we could do cars like the Bond Esprit. Um, so we looked through all the cars where the engine was behind the driver, and we actually arrived at Europa. And Europa is quite an interesting car because originally back in the six, sorry, 50s now, when Ford was looking to win Le Mans, they actually were pitched by Lotus. So Ron Hickman drew the original Europa drawing. In fact, if you find it, yeah. Hickman Europa, in the, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's this little handwritten inscription, pitch to Ford for a mid-engined sports car. That was Lotus's pitch for GT40. And then ultimately Lotus didn't get the gig, but Radford did. Yeah. So the original car was a Lola chassis, Radford body, Ford power. And then, you know, we know the rest is history. So while we were looking at a design exercise around Europa, a car that was really unsuccessful here in America, um, we stumbled across the Europa Type 62, mm -hmm. which was a Europa, but on steroids and styled yeah. for, for racing. And it's got that kind of real Lola 60s um, vibe. You know, the, the, the world is your oyster, particularly with a, a platform like Exige. Now we've done some really big engineering changes. You know, the wheelbase is longer, the track's wider, new wishbones, new uprights, new brakes, new suspension. You know, it's, it's not an Exige, it's a Radford Exige. So an owner can, uh, can make uh, you know, anything from 430 brake horsepower, our entry level, all the way up to 650. So, you know, there's a big range to choose from. And then of course there's specs and colors and leathers and. Yeah. The yeah. point is, is that it's always going to be customer led. Yeah. And if you go back 1920s, you, know, you went to Rolls Royce, you couldn't buy a car. Mm -hmm. You bought a chassis with an engine and then Rolls Royce would direct you to one of their favorite coach builders. And then you'd go to Mulliner or Park Ward. Oh, but, but that's yeah. the key is the client works with the artist. Yeah. And then between them, they arrive at the client's mm -hmm. desired spec. So we are going to be limited. You know, it is going to be a two seater sports car. We're not going to add any more doors. So the, the, the overall shape, but in terms of, you know, people might want to widen the arches, bigger front splitter. You know, we're having a conversation with someone about making a spider. How much is the car? Yes. Well, our entry level is a shade over $400,000. Yeah. Um, and that'll get you a really comprehensive car. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, if you get into the realms of something super bespoke, yeah, yeah sky's the limit. Yeah, exactly. Blank check territory. Yeah, but remember, we're not, at, we're not operating in the realms that other brands would. Mm -hmm. You know, we've just been to Quail yeah. on the same lawn as the you know, iconic brands like Lamborghini and Bugatti and Porsche and Rolls Royce, you know, we're still a real big chunk below any of those. Mm -hmm. You know, one of our things that we, you know, we really set out to do at Radford is not make our cars, you know, the million dollar mark yep. because, you know, we're celebrating brand heritage, not trying to make it super duper exclusive. Yeah. But it is exclusive. <laughs> Um, so what else have you got up your sleeve then? Uh, there must be a mini in the works, right? It's what uh, all I can place. say at this stage is that we've uh, very publicly and openly talked about Lotus. We've teased up to eventually revealing it. We have got other OEMs, OEMs contracted, inked and started. Jensen actually drove one, the second car. <laughs> and all I can say is that it's not a sports car. Interesting. <gasps> I mean, certain people would love this car. I'm not going to name any, but Harris, I think, is his surname. I think he would like it because you can drift it yeah. and it will be a constant drift. It's not one of those things you get it to a point and it's gone. Yeah. Um, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to drift well, but that's not the reason behind <laughs> the car or what we're trying to achieve. As, as, a, as a racing driver, you don't actually want everything to be too stiff. Obviously, you want it to be precise, but you want it to be forgiving as well. Um, and, you know, I understand that this isn't, entirely a race car. It's, it's a road car that can be used on a track. Uh, so it needs to be gradual in everything that it does. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be too snappy. Even with the high horsepower uh, car, um, it needs to be a very gradual feeling. And we've, we've done quite a lot to, to make sure that it is drivable, that it's not snappy. As you probably know, Lotuses are quite short. Yeah. Uh, and this is a little bit longer than, than your average uh, Lotus. Uh, so it, it does give it a bit more of a uh, a gradual feel to it yeah. um, but in doing so we've had to do quite a lot to the front end to, to make sure it's still very precise in the in, in the way that it drives so precision is is key and it's always been from for me in my career yeah. you know I'm, I'm i'm good at driving precise cars whereas if a car's too oversteery mm -hmm. it doesn't work for me so yeah. i have kind of designed it around my style which i think is probably a good thing for everyone that's gonna drive it because yeah. it makes it easier hopefully for them to drive and it gives them more confidence i think you know growing up 
uh, I always wanted the most powerful car, the fastest car, the car that did something that other cars didn't in terms of speed um, or the most downforce on a car. Um, I've definitely changed and I think a lot of people have when it comes to cars. I think it's probably because of Singer. You know, they've designed these wonderful cars that they don't tell you how quick it goes naught to 60. It's about the driving experience. And, and that's what Radford is all about as well. Yeah. Um, so for me to work with British brands is, is the most exciting because those are the cars I grew up with. Yeah. You know, as a kid, I grew up, I saw minis um, on the street. I saw, a, you know, Capris on the street. And, and those sort of things were, were what I loved and really wanted as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I loved I loved a Cosi as well. You know, an RS five hundred was was like the dream. Toyota Supra was really cool. Certain 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 cars like that, I don't think you can reimagine quite yet. Yeah. Um, bit from too, bit yeah, too early for it's those, a it's yeah. a bit too early. So, uh, but there are so many um, cars that would work. British cars brands, but also other other brands that would work. And uh, we 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 have, um, as we know, an OEM lined up for our second car. Yeah and future cars as well. So it's proper exciting. It's ready, proper- ready to drop the world exclusive now? It's, it doesn't have to be just cars that have done well in the past. Mm. You know, cars that were, were famous for being beautiful or the engineering of the car. For us, we could take a car that really didn't work and try and make it cool. And I think that's, that's the exciting thing with, with Radford. Um, and we're able to work with different OEMs and completely different designs. And obviously this is a sports car. Ant's already said the next one isn't a sports car. Yeah. Very different to this, but equally as exciting. And I, and I think that uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna bring up a lot of emotion in people when they see the second car.